So in this particular lecture, let's learn how to fetch the detailed food recipe of the item for which we have clicked this view recipe button. So as soon as we click this view recipe button, we get the ID of that particular recipe updated over here inside the details component which we have. Now our job is to go ahead, make use of this ID to fetch the detailed recipe. So in order to fetch the detailed recipe, you actually need to take a look at the Spoonacular APIs documentation. So if you go to the docs, we have used this endpoints to search for a particular recipe and we have searched depending upon a query. However, what if you actually want to get the detailed recipe information? So if you take a look at the navigation here, here as you can see, you have an option for getting the recipe information. So if you click on this option right here, as you can see here, you will be able to get the endpoint, which allows us to get the recipe information depending upon the ID of the food item which we pass. And that's exactly what we want as well. So therefore what we will do is, as we want to get the recipe information inside the food detail, which is this particular component right here, let's go ahead and let's make an API call to this particular endpoint over here. So this is the food details component and I've actually named this thing as food detail. So uh, let's replace this with food details everywhere we have used it. So let's go inside the app as well and let's replace it with food details and also import food details. And once we are done with this, now we could start working on fetching the data. All right, so now let's go ahead and inside this particular component itself, let's create the URL. So I would say const URL. So this is the same exact thing which we have done in the previous case as well. So over here, I'll copy this URL right here. So let's copy this, paste it up over here and let's make the modification over here itself. So instead of this ID over here, now we actually have to pass in the food ID, which we actually receive from here. So for example, if I select one of those items, I'll get that ID here. So I simply have to get that ID and pass it to this particular endpoint. And this will actually give us back the detailed recipe for that particular item. So over here, I could simply go ahead, use a dollar sign and replace this ID with food ID and that's it. Now the URL is constructed and this will actually give us back the result. So after constructing this URL, we actually have to make a fetch request to this particular URL. So we will be making that in the use effect hook. Now along with the URL, you also need the API key as well. So let's get the API key from the component which we have up over here. So I guess we have actually made that particular request inside the search component. So if you take a look at this, this is our API key. So I'll copy the same API key variable along with the API key here, paste it up over here. And just as we have used the use effect hook to actually make an API call here, we are going to do the same thing over here as well. So let's go ahead and let's use the use effect hook to make an API call. So use effect. And in this effect, as we all know, first of all, you need to pass in a callback function. So this is going to be our callback function. And this is going to be our dependency array. So for now, let's keep the dependency array as empty. And let's not add any kind of dependency over there. And in this particular callback function, let's define another function to fetch the food details or the detailed recipe. So let's name this function as fetch food. So function that's going to be fetch food. And in this particular function, we will simply make use of the fetch function, which is used in JavaScript. And over here to this particular fetch function, I simply now have to pass in this URL along with this API key here. So over here, I'll use string literal and I will substitute this with the URL. So I would say dollar URL. So this will take this URL and substitute it up over here. And after the URL ends over here, finally, I also have to append the API key as well. So question mark API key is going to be equal to the API key variable, which we have set. So API key, and that's it. So this will now actually fetch us the data. So let's save that data into a response. So const response equals this. Now we all know that 
this fetch function is going to take a while to fetch the data from the database or the API and give us back the result. Therefore, we'll make this thing await and we'll also make this function async. So async function fetch food will make this thing await. And once we have that response, let's decode that response. So I would say response.json and let's save this response into a data variable. So const data equals this. And also this needs to be await as well. All right. And after that, let's go ahead and let's try to log this data to the console and see the kind of result we would get. So console.log data. And that's it. So now once we have this function ready, and now the final thing which we need to do is we need to call this function. So let's see what happens if I try to call this function right away. So fetch food, we have called that and we all know that whenever you go ahead and save this application, the application is going to re-render and that's actually going to cause this use effect to execute. So it will automatically go ahead and execute this function for us and if we get any kind of result, it will actually log that to the console. So as soon as I save this, as you can see, now we got the result over here and the result is for this particular recipe with an ID, this one. And as you can see, this object gives us back a whole bunch of information about the recipe over here. So you have the image, uh, you have the different occasions on which you could cook that particular recipe. You also have the preparation time, the price per serving, the number of servings, and a whole bunch of other information which you could use for your application. However, notice one thing what happens when I refresh this. So as soon as I refresh this, you're going to get an error over here. And the reason why you are getting an error over here is because what happens is when you reload your application, there's actually no food ID selected. And that's because we have not clicked any one of the buttons here. And as we have not selected any kind of recipe, there's no food ID. And as there's no food ID over here, this URL becomes invalid because we are not passing in any kind of ID here. So to solve this issue, what you could do is you could make this API call only when we have some sort of a food ID. So that's one thing which you could do. However, the workaround which we are going to use in this case is that we are going to set a by default value for this food ID. So this food ID is actually defined up over here. So right now this is empty. So instead of this being empty, let's take one of the IDs from here and let's say we set the by default ID to this. So now what happens is if I go ahead and hit refresh by default, we actually get this particular recipe right here which is the recipe for this particular food ID. All right, so now once we are getting all of this information here, what we could do is we could represent this information or display this information on the detail component which we have. However, to display that information here, first of all, we have to save this information into some sort of a state. So in order to save this information into state, let's go ahead and let's create a state right inside the detail view itself. So let's go to the food detail view and up over here I'll create a new state so let's call the state variable as food and set food equals use state and as this is going to be an object I'll pass in curly braces here and now what we wish to do is whenever we get this data from the API we want to set the food to that particular data so set food data and that's it so now once we have that particular data set to the food state variable, now we could go ahead and render that up over here. So instead of just rendering the food ID, let's say we also want to render the image and the title for that particular food item. So over here I could say food dot title. And after that, let's also go ahead, add an image tag here. And let's say this is going to be food dot image. Let's save this and if I go back here, as you can see, we get the image as well as the name of that particular food item here. However, there's one problem here. Let's say if I select another recipe here, so if I click on view recipe for Thai pizza, the ID over here changes, but the recipe over here does not change. And that's because 
we need to explicitly tell React that, all right, whenever the ID changes, we actually want to make a fetch call and fetch another recipe. And it's not doing that right now because right now the use effect is only executed when the component is first rendered. So now in order to go ahead and make an API call, whenever the food ID changes, we have to add in food ID over here to the dependency array of this use effect. So if I add food ID here, what happens is now our application understands that, all right, whenever the food ID changes, I need to execute the use effect hook. And then this use effect hook is going to make a new fetch call and fetch the new recipe data. So let's see how this would work. So I'll hit refresh. So first of all, uh, we get the by default recipe here. Now, if I click on the view recipe for this one, as you can see the data over here changed instantly. Now, if I go ahead and click on view recipe for Thai pizza, as you can see, now we are not getting anything here. And that's because Thai pizza does not have an image here. So let's select something else. So let's select this pizza. And as you can see, the name and the image for that particular pizza appeared. Now over here, we are currently only displaying the name and the pizza. But remember that we are getting this information from a different API, which also has a whole bunch of other information as well. So if you inspect this, go to the console you'll be able to see that the object which we are getting here, it has a whole bunch of other informations as well. So for example, it has this array inside of the object, which is nothing but the instructions which you need to follow. So if you take a look at the steps here, it lays out the detailed steps which you need to follow to make this recipe. Along with this, you also have different options like which particular cuisines does this recipe belong to, it also specifies the specific diets for that recipe as well. So this object has a whole lot of information which you could use to create your application. And in the next lecture, we are going to do the same. So in the next lecture, what we will be doing here is that we will be actually fetching a whole bunch of other information about the recipe which we have here from the API. And we are going to render that information on this particular section of the page. So let's learn how to do that in the next one.